This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Good evening. It is hard to believe almost four weeks now into the war in the Middle East, an agonizing wait for so many Bay Area families with loved ones still stranded in Gaza. Today, some dual citizens were allowed to cross into Egypt through the Rafah border. President Biden says 74 Americans are among those who were able to leave, including one woman who was visiting her family in Gaza when the war broke out. Unfortunately, um, I'm not even excited to leave Gaza because we have so many people that we live and care about, um, we love and care about. So right now I'm between ice and fire. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to see the family that I left behind or the friends that I left behind. Heartbreaking. Evacuees are being bused into Egypt, but about 300 Americans are still waiting to get out, and among them, a grandmother who has family right here in the Bay Area. Our Leslie Gooden heard from her grandchildren about why they're now suing the federal government. They're just humans. Saheed and Dina Basiso are first cousins, whose 81-year-old grandmother who is a U.S. citizen, has been stuck in Gaza since the war began. She's with her son who's been taking care of her for as long as she can remember. So for a mother to just abandon her son in the middle of a war zone after watching many of her relatives pass away due to these casualties, it's just, it's just mind-boggling. The two say that their grandmother has been granted access to cross into Egypt, but her traveling alone, they believe, puts her life at risk. She's already in war. She has no medication. She hasn't ate or drinking for 30, almost 30 days. No lights, no electricity, barely any sleep. They don't have beds. I'm sure you guys have all seen it. Ghassan Shamia is representing the families in this lawsuit. She attempt to cross by herself. She won't make it. The State Department has not given clearance to any family members to help her in this crossing. She is in need of medical attention. She was supposed to return with my uncle with his current valid visa. So was to have her son, my uncle, be her caretaker through her trip to Gaza and to see her home. Unfortunately, her home has been bombed, so she got to see it for the last time. The family say they have been asking for the State Department or any official for help. To their congressional representatives fall short. When they fall on silent ears, when calls to the State Department and contact with the State Department is met with generic templated emails, they have no choice but to seek legal resource and hold our government accountable. They filed the lawsuit on Monday and say they did this because their grandmother means the world to them. And what they want is simple. We are here again to demand that our Palestinian Americans stranded in Gaza receive equity and the same treatment that other Americans have received. And they have this message for their grandmother. I just want to tell you, Sito, you're the strongest lady I know, um, stronger than men and women. And I, I want you to stay strong and we're going to get through this and hopefully there'll be a ceasefire and a free Palestine. And even if the stranded Americans are allowed out of Gaza and into Egypt, it's still unclear if there is a coordinated effort to get them back into the U.S. And we know many of you do have connections to the war in the Middle East. We're here for you as developments come in. Just go to our website, kpix.com, and streaming on the CBS News app. Federal officials in San Francisco say they are taking an all-hands-on-deck approach to fighting fentanyl in the city, hoping that the threat of federal charges will stop people from dealing the drug. The U.S. Attorney's Office says they are focusing on the tenderloin as ground zero of the fentanyl crisis, targeting drug dealers and working up drug supply chains. They will work to fast-track cases to try and bring accused fentanyl dealers to trial in less than 30 days rather than waiting months or years. We will charge and prosecute individuals who sell fentanyl on or near our federal buildings. This includes the Ninth Circuit Courthouse, the Nancy Pelosi Federal Building on 7th and Mission Streets, and this build, building, the Burton Federal Building. And they also plan on using the increased federal resources to track the money used to supply fentanyl. We are tracking down suppliers, and we are holding accountable money services who turn a blind eye to drug transactions on their networks and take all necessary steps to prevent this poison from reaching our streets. 
The U.S. Attorney's Office says in the past four months they have brought federal charges against more than 30 defendants. Contra Costa County health officials are investigating a tuberculosis outbreak at happening at the California Grand Casino. Now, so far, they have confirmed 10 cases among staff and former guests. But health officials have not been able to pinpoint the source of the outbreak. So they're telling anyone who has been there between 2018 and this year to get checked out. Symptoms of TB include a persistent or bloody cough, fever, unexpected weight loss, and fatigue. All right, now let's get to an update to a story about a youth football team in Oakland. So over the summer, they had to move out of their practice field after gunfire erupted close by. Not once, but twice. So as Andrea Nakano shows us, tonight they're back on a new field and they are practicing for a game of a lifetime. All right, let's go. Run and play. Run, 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 run. Run your route. The East Bay Panthers have a new home field tucked away at Madison Park Academy, closed off to the public. In late August, there were two violent shootings in a span of a week at Verde's Carter Park. Masked men came running onto the field and coaches decided it was too unsafe to play. Anthony Ray started playing football at the age of eight and is glad the season has kept going. I'm grateful to be here now. I'm grateful that nobody on the team was injured or shot or anything like that. Players say they definitely feel safer on their new field, even though there are some minor issues with the surface. It's all right. I just hate the, it's like too much goose poop and like stuff like that. I don't really like the field. There's a lot of like poop around because of the geese and um, it's kind of dry. The grass is pretty dry, but um, I'm not complaining. At least we have a field to be at. Good. For weeks, the Panthers didn't have a home field. Coaches not only coached, but they also helped kids get to different practice fields and even a game in Santa Rosa. Us coaches do bring them in to practice, um, and some of us coaches do sacrifice our jobs to come to be here with them. There you go, right there. The hard work by all has paid off. These boys will compete for the league championship this weekend. This is all about these young men that came and sacrificed everything they could. They came over adversity and just kept grinding away. Uh, I'm excited because it's going to be my first ring, like, because this is my second year playing tackle football. Yeah. And you're saying first ring, you know you're going to win. Yeah. <laughs> For these kids, it's not just about what they hope to accomplish this weekend and this season. They have dreams of playing Division One football after high school. It means a lot to me. Uh, I do want to, like, take football to another level. Um, I don't want to stay where I'm at. So the team plays the championship game this weekend in Sacramento. If they win, they will go on to nationals in San Diego. Congratulations and good luck. So let's face it. It seems like people can hardly agree when Christmas season starts. A mall in Los Angeles clearly not ashamed to let everyone know they begin right after Halloween. Today they flew in an enormous Christmas tree through the sky, suspended by a crane to be installed at the mall. The tree is going to be decorated by 15,000 lights, 10,000 ornaments. Okay, their choice. Thanks for watching. The news continues at 8 on Pix Plus or 44 Cable 12. See you back here at 11. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for joining us.